hey everyone welcome back to my channel so a lot of you guys requested that i walk you through biostats questions after watching my ethics videos so i decided to pick the most challenging topics of biostats or the most challenging questions from your world about attributable risk and absolute risk reduction uh, because some of these are really confusing they used to confuse me personally so today I'm gonna walk you through to your world questions and show you exactly how to break them down in a simple way uh, so let's get started all right, before I go into the questions, I want you to understand the difference like between attributable risk and absolute risk reduction. Think about it just like that. Attributable risk means something is harmful and uh, absolute risk reduction means something is protective. So you, whenever you see a question talking about attributable risk, that means it's talking about something harmful or that the treatment group um, or the drug in the treatment group has more adverse events but when a question talks about absolute risk reduction it means that the drug is protective because it reduces the risk okay so always think about it this way when uh, you are faced with such questions so attributable risk is something harmful but absolute risk reduction is protective or uh, treating okay so meaning lower adverse event risk okay so let's get started with the first question um, the question says a study compared drug a versus standard therapy in preventing recurrent pulmonary embolism uh, so this is the adverse event I'm gonna show you guys a really simple way to go about these questions um, like without having to read through all these like complicated lines but let's just read the question first okay so we are comparing drug a with standard therapy or control in preventing an adverse event which is pulmonary embolism the absolute risk reduction so once you see it talking about absolute risk reduction for drug a right away you should know that drug a is protective like i told you right so you should right away figure out that the adverse event rate with drug a will obviously be less than the standard because it's absolute risk reduction which means the drug a reduces the risk just like right off the bat okay uh, so before I continue the entire question I want you guys to go about these questions in one way there's only one way that will make this like kind of simpler uh, because there is a lot of numbers thrown here or there that you really want to organize them so one thing I do for all these questions is to draw the simple uh, two by two table. Okay, so draw the simple two by two table for exposures and outcomes. All right. So here you have the exposures and here you have the outcome, which is pulmonary embolism, which is the adverse event rate. The adverse event here is pulmonary embolism. And the exposures here, there's people who took drug A and there is people who took the control drug or the standard therapy, right? Excuse me, guys. All right, so the adverse event here is pulmonary embolism positive or negative okay and here is the total okay so the incidence of recurrent pulmonary embolism in the standard therapy group was six percent okay so here it is six percent which is a number out of the total gives six percent that's the percentage and there were 24 patients who developed recurrent pulmonary embolism the drug a group so this is an absolute number so i'm gonna jot it down here in the table 
So right now I have 24 patients developed a recurrent pulmonary embolism in drug A group and I don't know about the rest but I know the percentage, right? So the percentage or, of, or incidence of pulmonary embolism, the standard therapy was 6%. So this one is 6%, right? And the one, um, the drug A one, I don't know it, but I know the absolute risk reduction. That means that the difference or the how much drug A reduced the risk of pulmonary embolism the difference is 4%, okay? So the difference between the incidence in the standard therapy minus the incidence in drug A is 4%. That means that the incidence in drug A is 2%. So 24 out of the total is 2%, okay? So what the question wants here is how many total subjects were there in the drug A group? So if 24 out of the total is 2%, then what is the total? You can very easily obtain this by dividing 24 by 0.02, and that will be 1,200. So essentially, you could get this question just by realizing that Drug A is protective. The fact that drug A is protective and saying it, the absolute risk reduction versus standard therapy was 4%, it means the drug A has a lower incidence of pulmonary embolism by 4%. Okay? So it's, uh, and if the incidence in the standard group was 6%, it was 4% less in drug A, right? because drug A is protective. So 6 minus 2 is 4. Now I know the 2%. This 2% is my key here, which means that 24 who develop pulmonary embolism out of a total that I don't know is 2%, okay? And then you can very easily get the total. And so I, what I want you to do every time with these questions is to draw a 2 by 2 table, okay? And uh, to realize that absolute risk reduction is calculated by, like, for absolute risk reduction, it's something for a drug that is protective, okay? Um, so, how do you know, actually, how to calculate the absolute risk reduction? I would say just subtract the big number from the smaller one, okay? So, for... The uh, absolute risk reduction, the control or the standard therapy will have a higher incidence of adverse events. So standard therapy uh, had 6% incidence of pulmonary embolism. But the uh, protective drug, which is drug A, had only 2%, right? So you just subtract the smaller number from the bigger one. In the case of absolute risk reduction, the formula is the control minus the treatment line. And that's going to be flipped when we talk about um, attributable risk. So instead of trying to memorize uh, which one should I subtract, like should I subtract the treatment from the control or the other way around, just remove the small number from the big one and that's it. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. All right, so an experimental drug X is being tested for the treatment of stage 4 solid tumor malignancy. So obviously this is, must be like a chemotherapeutic drug or something. Part of the drug company's evaluation process is to analyze survival data after 3 months of treatment. The results are given the table below. I'm going to talk to you guys about that table. But which the following best represents the number needed to harm for drug X? Right away, you should figure out the drug X is harmful, not protective, which means the rate we're going to use here is not absolute risk reduction. We're going to use attributable risk. So once you realize that in order to calculate number needed to harm, you need the attributable risk, which means the drug X must be associated with higher risk of adverse events than control or than the placebo. 
And that's the complete opposite of the case with uh, absolute risk reduction in the previous question. When I say absolute risk reduction, it means that the treatment group has a lower risk of adverse events. When I say attributable risk or a number needed to harm, that means that the treatment group has more adverse events than the control. Okay, so it's very important to know that. Like I said, you always want to draw the 2x2 two two contingency table with the exposure in the rows and the outcome or adverse events in the columns, all right? Now, you notice here that not every time you will get a table presented in the classic way. So here in this question, it was actually confusing you. It put the exposure in the columns and the treatment or the um, outcome in the rows. So it flipped it. So what I want you to do is to rearrange that and put the exposure in the rows and the outcome in the columns, okay? So the exposure here would be treated with drug X, which is the harmful one. you got to remember that because being harmful means it, we're going to expect a higher risk or more adverse events than the placebo, all right? And here is people who took placebo. Now, what is the adverse event here? Alive at three months, dead at three months. Adverse event here is death, okay? So the outcome here is dead or alive, okay? You always want to put the positive, which is, um, I mean, positive for the outcome is dead or alive, not dead, okay? So let's rearrange it. Those who took drug X, those uh, who took drug X are 80 people in total, of which 60 were dead and 20 are alive. Okay. Out of those who took placebo, which are 76 in total, 38 plus 38 is 76. 50, it was a 50-50, so 38 were dead, 38 were alive. So if you actually calculate the adverse event rate in these, or the percentage of people who died out of all those who took drug X is 60 over 80. So 60 out of all 80 people who took drug X died. What do you think this percentage is? This is 75%, which means that 75% of people who took drug X died, okay? This is what I've just calculated. This percentage that I just calculated is called the event rate for drug X, okay? Now, what about the placebo, those who took placebo? Out of the 76 people who took the placebo, 38 died, so 38 out of the entire total of 76 people who took placebo died, which is like I told you before, 50-50. So 50%, half the people who took placebo died. However, 75%, like three quarters of the people who took drug X died. So as you can see, there is more adverse event rate with drug X, which is why here we're using the number needed to harm, which means that it is more harmful than control. In the other situation, it was drug A, and drug A was protective, okay? So it is less harmful than control, which is why we were using absolute risk reduction. Here, however, as you can see, the difference between 75 and 50 is 25, which means that drug X is associated with 25% more deaths than placebo. The rate I've just mentioned is called attributable risk, which means that there is 25% more deaths attributable to drug X. 25% more attributable to drug X. So had it been for drug X, we would only have 50% deaths. But because of drug X, we have 25 more. So that gives us 75. You get the idea? 
So in order to calculate attributable risk, you notice we subtracted the small number from the big number. We always do that. Just remember it like that. I remember it, the, subtract the small number from the bigger number. In reality, it's the event rate in the treatment group, which is the drug X, minus the event rate in the control group, which is the opposite formula for the one we use in absolute risk reduction. We put the bigger number first. So in absolute risk reduction, you put control minus treatment because control had more adverse events. But here I put uh, treatment minus control because treatment was the bigger number has more adverse events so you always subtract the small number from the bigger number that's it okay however the question here doesn't want us to calculate attributable risk it goes one step further and asks about the number needed to harm so the number needed to harm is essentially an inverse of the attributable risk okay so it is one over attributable risk 75 minus 50 is 25 percent so one over 0.025 one over 25 percent it equals four so what does that mean four means that in order i need to treat four people with drug x in order for one patient to die that is the number needed to harm. The harm here is death, but sometimes the harm may be something else, maybe an adverse event. But in this case, harm means death. So it differs according to the situation. So I need to treat four people with drug X for one person to be harmed for one. And in this case, it's for one person to die. All right, so to sum up guys, like I told you, attributable risk is something harmful and absolute risk reduction is something protective which is harmful which is protective i mean here the treatment group the treatment could be more harmful than control and that will be the case with attributable risk or the treatment may be protective or less harmful than control in which case it will be absolute risk reduction for this reason we always want to calculate or subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. Now, because attributable risk is the harmful one, the treatment group is the harmful one, it's therefore associated with more events. So the bigger number is always the treatment one. But because absolute risk reduction, it's the control that is harmful because the drug is protective. Therefore, the control is associated with more risk of adverse events so the bigger number is the one the control so here you always subtract the control from the treatment here subtract treatment from control and these rates are used to calculate the number needed to harm for attributable risk and to calculate the number needed to treat for absolute risk reduction i hope guys that this makes sense and i tried my best with this subject honestly it's not my strongest at all so i hope you like this video